how not to raft. We're literally gonna try to get a boat stuck on this rock and then try to pull it out to find out how strong a three to one is, maybe how strong the D-rings are and how strong we can pull wrapping on all of these boulders over here and building an anchor to retrieve our boat. We have no idea how it's gonna go. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Trevor with Rafting Magazine. We're gonna wrap a boat today. <laughs> uh, what is what is he doing down there? What we'll be doing is we're gonna have two lines on either side, and we're gonna just move that boat down river till we get it right on the rock, and then wrap it on there. What's he gonna do? Swim. <laughs> for science. And what Swim do you, for science. What are you about to do with this? Okay, so I have a throw bag here. I have uh, I think this is 60 feet of rope and I'm gonna be passing it to James over there, who's on the other side. He's gonna grab this throw bag, he's gonna hang on to it, and then I'm gonna pass this to Nathan, who's gonna clip it on the other side. Cool. We made this as complicated as possible. That's what we like to do and how not to. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nathan, and we're gonna go out there, get this boat stuck on a rock, hopefully fill it full of water, and then pull it off. <laughs> Are we gonna have to do a rescue too? You, you might have to do a rescue. Well, two for one in this yeah. episode. All right. Yeah, if I go downstream, it's gonna get pretty lively <laughs> for science. Are you excited? Yeah. Oh man. You got it, you got it guys, you got it. Nice. Oh no. Oh no. Oh man, brutal. Got it, bud. Look at you, look at you. Oh. Okay, that didn't work so well. <laughs> Got a little rope burn. We're gonna try and shuttle it back upstream with less air, hopefully. And hopefully it should wrap a little harder on that. Looks like we're gonna try to do it again. Yeah! Slack, 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 slack! Yeah! Good job! Is it time to set it up? All right. All right, we got a three to one mechanical advantage system. We got a line scale three here going through. Another line scale back there. This way we're measuring input and we're measuring the force on the system. So your peak force so far with all the stretch is 0.5. You still haven't reached more than 1.72. It's out. It's out. As soon as we let go of this line. Yeah. We're gonna give this some slack. You see this number right here? Like a, like a... You're at 1.3 to 1.6. Wow. That's okay, the so current load. That quite a bit. See if we can do it again. One, two, three. One, two, three. There it is. She's coming off. One, two, three. <sighs> okay, looks like that boat's pretty much come off at this point. 2.5 2. 2. is the water. Yeah, I'm not getting my hands in there. Your your max force is 0.78. You didn't break a D-ring. What do you think about that? Is that a that's is that normal to not break them or to break yeah, them? Yeah, it's normal to not break them. It's currently at 2.4. So you gotta do more force than you've ever done. Ugh. It's Ugh. not on a releasable system, you know? Ugh. I, I don't have the strength to do this like this. Ugh. Wow, we're at 3.26 right now from the water. Or that was peak force. Now it's two and a half is the current load and we can't put two and a half on the system. So. Okay, 
0.26 was our um, peak force from the water, not from us. Not from us. Yeah. We could only generate 1.7-ish. You'd have to overcome that. How, yeah. how was it for you out there? Well, once we got the boat wrapped, um, it was pretty stable, not too super stressful, but the amount of force, like in that last, last little bit before we cut the prusik, I was trying to like lever it around, change the shape of the boat and kind of try and pull it up and out of the water to try and get it to, to move. And I mean, it just goes to show that like sometimes you gotta get ropes out and move things, but as soon as we cut the rope, it did what it thought it was gonna do and it just peeled itself out of there. Which is the goal. Which is the goal. It was cool to see how much water was catching when it was under tension in that last little bit where it was all on the progress capture and, and just hanging out, putting myself in some awkward positions to try and get it to take on the water. Um, I was definitely hanging myself out there just, just a little bit more than I wanted to. Now this video was successful in the fact that we wrapped a boat, but there's not super clean science when trying to do stuff in real life. So don't get hung up on the numbers. I also have been learning about the line scale threes. Certain types of carabiners can throw the number off. Or if you girth hitch stuff, you can throw the number off. But we were consistent internally with the test. And so what I learned is water can put a lot more force on than we could generate, regardless of what the numbers were saying. Now you'll notice that the raft came off the rocks as soon as we stopped trying to pull it. Ironic, I know. And we did some more three to one tests back at my lab and that was actually the birth of the mechanical advantage is a myth video and we just found out how much it, you get and don't get out of a mechanical advantage system i also was inspired to do the vt prusik video because we had to cut the prusik so not that you can get vt prusiks done under a lot of tension but in that situation i believe we could have so make sure you check out those other videos as those are very relevant to this one. What you're about to see is actually the stuff I'm most interested in testing in future videos. There are D-links on a thwart that have different ways that it was put on. Uh, some are welded, some are glued, some are whatever, and we pull test them. And that's the other half of this video you're about to see. If you wanna see more of that, let me know in the comments so we know if you'd like us to pursue that. Because even if you can generate a lot of force on your boat, if you're ripping off the connectors, what good is that gonna do? I love making sure all of our content is free, but it is not free to make. We are trying to mature from donations, which I'm still dependent on, to affiliate links, where if you buy gear from extremegear.org, it helps support this channel. And since pulleys is part of this video, we're gonna do 20% off for 24 hours. I'm trying to do these for the whole day since it goes around the world and gives everybody a chance to buy them. We do ship internationally. 20% off on our pulleys for 24 hours. Anything full priced on extremegear.org supports this channel and any of the other links in the description below also support this channel. Let's go break some D-links. The thing I'm really curious about is what is gonna be the failure point? How much is it gonna take to tear these things off? <laughs> the D-link will break. <clears throat> Sorry. I think the fabric will break. Uh, I think the D-link will break. Okay, so it's not the same shape as a D anymore. But wow, that just tore right through that. I am so wrong. That doesn't happen very often. This stuff looks stronger than it really is. Huh. And it took a thousand pounds. 4.4 is a thousand pounds. It started to like think tear right here maybe. And then it did go just straight down after that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, do it, do it, do it. That was rad. This D link is an O link and it just did different stuff than the last one because we pulled it evenly. Wow, I think the weld actually... Wow, that's hot. No, <laughs> it's actually not hot, uh, but it is cool. I think this is the, my favorite part. 
<laughs> it just strangled the shit out of this thing. Looks like a minion, an orange one. If I'm trying to keep the channel family friendly. <laughs> what do you think of it? You're the rafter. Well, that certainly didn't do what I expected either. I, <laughs> I was really hoping that D-Link would break. I was so close, man. <laughs> Looks like I won again. <laughs> I know. That tore the entire urethane face off of this. And it's just down to the fabric. The urethane face is actually still on the thwart. So the here. welds came out. Came yeah, this, yeah. This tore the weld straight off of there and then ripped through three sheets. What was the fabric. max force you got on your three to one? <laughs> if you get three or four and your peak force is six, when, you, you, when you're not pulling in, in cheer, but you're pulling in tension, like you're not going to break a D-link. You might actually deform it though. But you said you've had you know, it happen to you before. This is a welded um, D-ring. So the the ones that I've had blown off were glued. Mm. And I'm interested to bring in some glued ones and see how that goes. And they're also old glue. So yeah, that probably had something to do with it. It's also interesting to see that the thwart held up so well against that compressive force. Because one of the other techniques is once you pop your D-rings off, you go around the two. You gotta wrap it. And then... <laughs> so now I'm curious what it's going to take. If we wrapped a line around this, what it's going to take to blow up this tube. That's going to be the real test. What are people going to have to do to see that? I think they're going to have to subscribe. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> That's so annoying when you're binge watching videos to hear that. But... That's because we need you to do it. Cheers.